On the night of September 7, a drone attacked an ammunition depot in the Voronezh region of Russia, causing a fire and detonation. Residents of the village of Solditskoy in the Ostrogotsky district, where the depot is located, are being evacuated, and a state of emergency has been declared in the district. Local Governor Guzov said the drone was detected and suppressed, but, as a result of the UAV's fall, a fire broke out that spread to explosive objects and a detonation began. He also reported the evacuation of residents from one settlement. According to the governor, several dozen people were allegedly in the danger zone. The Russians emphasized that there are no reported casualties. Online sources claim that a drone struck the ammunition warehouse and have published videos of the explosions. Local residents reported that the detonations have been ongoing for several hours. A warehouse of North Korean KN-23 missiles has been destroyed in the Voronezh region of the Russian Federation, military expert Alexander Musienko reported. In the Voronezh region, an ammunition depot is burning and detonating. According to my sources, this is the place from which KN-23 ballistic missiles were launched. Several weeks ago, another large depot was attacked nearby, he noted. Musienko added that while Russia is searching for missiles around the world, the Ukrainian defense forces are reducing its potential. President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, said that Russia is ready to return to negotiations with Ukraine based on the agreements reached in Istanbul in 2022. Are we ready to negotiate with them? We have never refused this, but not on the basis of some ephemeral demands, but on the basis of the documents that were agreed upon and actually initialed in Istanbul, Putin said at the Eastern Economic Forum. Putin's statement may indicate a change in his position on peace talks. At the beginning of the summer, the head of the Russian regime called the retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces beyond the borders of the annexed regions of Ukraine a precondition for the start of negotiations. After the invasion of the Kursk region, he spoke of the impossibility of such negotiations. And during the lesson, conversations about the important, which Putin held in Kizil, he allowed for the possibility of peace talks with Ukraine in the event of the retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces from the territory of the Kursk region. Thus, in just the last few weeks, Putin has already changed his position on the negotiations several times, continuing to reduce his demands on Ukraine. In June, the New York Times published the text of a draft peace agreement developed in the spring of 2022 by delegations from Ukraine and Russia. According to commentators, the terms proposed to Ukraine were unacceptable. The Istanbul Agreement implied a neutral status for Ukraine, but allowed the country to join the EU. The parties also agreed in the document that Ukraine accepts Russia's occupation of Crimea, but does not recognize Russian sovereignty over it. It was assumed that the status of Crimea would be determined within 10 to 15 years after the agreement and Volodymyr Zelensky and Putin were to agree on the status of other territories occupied by the Russian army at a personal meeting. The agreement also introduced restrictions on the size of the Ukrainian army and the number of various weapons. In the spring of 2022, the halt in negotiations, according to the newspaper, was influenced by Russia's attempt to gain veto power over military aid to Ukraine from its allies in the event of a new attack. Last November, the leader of the Ukrainian negotiating team, David Arakamia, cited several reasons why Ukraine refused to sign the treaty. 
One of them was that Kiev considered the document a ploy that would allow Moscow to rebuild its army and return to fight in Ukraine.